Hey everybody, this is Jeremiah Craig coming at you for another edition of Ask the Bootmaker. Today, we are talking with Alyssa Lennel White of Allie L's Custom Boots and Shoes, one of the only bootmakers, shoemaker in the state of Wyoming. There's very few of them in the state of Wyoming, which is kind of surprising to me because I mean, you would expect there to be a lot of cowboy boot makers in such a state centered around cowboy boots. Let's bring her in and kick this thing off. Yeah, How's your day going good. so far? Good, good. It's been a busy one making some, some local connections today, so it's been good. Nice. What pair of boots do you have behind you there? Oh, this is a pair of customs I've been working on for a guy. Uh, he wanted his brand on them. They've got, I love, love this leather. Um, wow. Is that bullhide? It's a, it's a bison, I think. I don't know. Bison. It's really hard to find now. It's, it's pretty much that particular one is pretty much gone because it was a kind of one-off from one of my leather suppliers. So. Wow. Special stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Alyssa, for joining yeah, me today. I am... Know. Very excited to be talking with one of the few custom boot makers in Wyoming. Um, There's I a wanna, few of us. Yeah, I've just more, more discovered so than two more. I've two discovered more. two more recently. They're both fairly fresh as well. So I'm in, I'm excited though that there's more. <laughs> yeah. Now, are they uh, younger like you, or have they been yes. doing it for a while? They're both younger like me. They're both probably in their, their 30s, you know, 20s and 30s. And, and we're scattered all over the state. So it's, it's kind of cool. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that uh, young folks are getting into custom boot making. Me too. Me too. I want to kick things off with a question from Carol Burgess, who asks, who or what inspired you to become a boot maker? <laughs> so, you know, I have my degree in design and technical theater. So I've always liked constructing and the whole concept behind making things. So when I had the opportunity to learn, I just kind of like, uh, absolutely, I want to learn how to do this. So it just, um, my mentor up in Laramie, his name's Tom Mattimore. He um, was, was who taught me uh, everything I know. And then, and then it's hard not to be inspired by some of you know, the big names, Lisa Sorrell, Rocket Buster, Paul Bond, you know, it's hard not to be inspired by them. How can you look at them and not think they make beautiful boots? <laughs> no doubt. So yeah, it, it just kind of, because I'm a creator, it gave me a, a really unique way to create. So it, it kind of went from there. Now, what drew you to boots? Um, cowboy boots in particular, rather than making any other types of shoes or leather goods? Um, you know, I make lots of different styles of shoes. Um, you know, I learned how to make military reenactment shoes originally. That was, that was how I started. Um, but there's no artistic freedom with that at all. Like they are very strict, you know, you have to make it out of this leather with the stitching in these places and rivets in these places. And, and they are, they're very strict about it. Um, Cowboy Boots has this big, beautiful open palette that I can work with that allows me to, to put anything I want on there, you know? So that's, that's really what drew me to Cowboy Boots in particular. Shoes I do, but there's a, it's such a small space to work with. You don't have quite the freedom of, of art on, on the shoe. Being uh, starting out as a a maker of boots used in reenactment, military reenactment settings, can you sort of compare the build of the old the old style of making these boots, since it has to be so strict, to the way that boots are made now? Um, you know, it's. Military boots have always had the rules. You know, the ones made now have very strict rules. They have to look in a certain way. They have to be a certain color. They have, you know, that's still, that's military. I guess my question is, um, I guess my question is, is it, are cowboy boots better than the military boots that you made for the reenactors quality wise? Like, 
is is oh, there absolutely. some the construction is better <laughs> what's what's better right. about them you know, it's different. It's a little bit different, but you know, I just, the opportunity to use different leathers is really what makes them quality. Um, you know, I loved working with the military boots because they're all veg tan and veg tan leather is fantastic to work with, uh, the way it molds and moves in your hands. Um, and I use a lot of the things I learned constructing military reenactment boots in my cowboy boots that a lot of cowboy boot makers don't out of out of that choice of this is what works for me and my business and and how I learned how to do them you know I learned the traditional way of hand stitching on a welt and I choose not to um lots of cowboy boot makers would kind of balk at that I'll be honest I'm very the rule I should be following but it, it just is a slightly different construction. Wood pegs were very common in military reenactment boots. Um, so I pegged a lot of boots by hand. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of transition between the two. So they're really, it's, it's not that different, even though it is. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, interesting. Um, so you saying that you don't hand stitch a, a, a welt. I got a question mm -hmm. from uh, Lindsay LaPing asking, what kind of equipment do you use? <laughs> Hi, Lindsay. I've known her since forever. So oh, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> thanks for the question, friend Lindsay. Of mine. Um, <laughs> but here's your question. I use, you know, um, big machinery. I use, you know, outsole stitchers, which are very common. Um, I McKay stitch on my soles, which is a machine that's, I'm 5'3" and the machine is taller than I am, you know, it's a big heavy duty industrial machinery. And, you know, this, I use some very standard to the boot making world and I use some that aren't quite as, you know, the McCain machine is not a standard to the cowboy boot making world. So. So yeah. what's the, what's the difference between the welt that is standard and that's, that would be considered the Goodyear welt, right? And then this one that you use, you're using a, like a, Blake McKay process. Can you yes. compare and so, contrast like the differences between those? Um, partly the, you know, the Goodyear well is hand stitched on. Okay. Um, and my hands already hurt a little bit and I try, I'm trying to save them <laughs> from, you know, in 30 years having to have surgery. I watched it happen. I don't want to go through it. Um, so it's, you know, it's a different set of construction and it can be very, very beautiful, but it is very hard to get perfect. Um, because it's done by hand. The Blake McKay is a full midsole. So there's actually a second full layer of leather on the boot that isn't typically there with a, with a Goodyear welt. Um, and it is stitched then to the insole from the inside to the outside. So there's layers of leather and it's stitched this way in between them. Um, and it, you know, it's faster a lot. <laughs> um, it gives a, just an extra layer of leather. You know, I've repaired boots before and an extra layer of leather is always a good thing before you wear, start wearing into your sock. <laughs> You know, it's just a different type of construction and it makes for a really sturdy boot. It does add a little bit of weight, so they get a little bit heavier. But Oh, how much heavier uh, are your boots than, I guess, Probably, everybody else's? You know, I don't find that they're a lot heavier myself. You know, wearing them, I do thin the leather down so it's not, like, excessively dense. Um, but, you know, I mean, a few ounces heavier, you know, you're probably not going to notice the difference unless you're, you know, wearing two different boots. So. Interesting. Cool. I like that, that you're doing that and the, the similarities between those two processes, but also how different they are at the same time. Yeah. It's really interesting to me. Um, cool. So we just had a question come through from uh, Say Sayako and he asks, you know, where are you based? And when we kick this thing off, you are Wyoming boot maker. Yes. Um, now, Wyoming sort of seems like boot country. Um, you got a cowboy on the license plate and everything. Um, but what is it like being a cowboy boot maker in Wyoming? Um, you know, there's cowboys here are, they're cowboys. They are working real, 
you know, they run, they drive cattle, they work hard, they are hard on their boots. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm based in Cheyenne, and Cheyenne is the big city of, I say that with quotes on purpose, of Wyoming. You know, we have 60,000 people in the entire city, 70 in the entire county, <laughs> 70,000. So it's, you know, it's, it's the biggest city in Wyoming, but it is Wyoming. We're, you know, smallest population in the state, so, or in, in the states. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's been so long in Cheyenne since there's been a bootmaker. It's kind of new here again. People are like surprised that that's what I do. They, they are surprised that I'm not painting previously made boots. They're surprised, you know, that I'm, I'm doing the whole process from the top down and, and it's not, so it's interesting. I think in other areas, there is more knowledge and just different knowledge um, that this is a thing. Um, but, you know, Cheyenne being the, is, is really the big city of Wyoming, right? It's 50,000, 70,000 people in the entire county. Um, so we have cowboys, but we're still a city like we're still a functional you know have all the chain restaurants and all the it's it's still a functional city versus a lot of the cowboys in a different areas of the state there's small populations so the entire population will be a ranch community where everybody owns a ranch and that's what they do um cheyenne's not necessarily that way um and we've not had a bootmaker in cheyenne for probably 25 years so it's almost a reintroduction in Cheyenne that I exist. Um, people, some people are like, oh yeah, you know, I remember this happening, you know, that we used to have one, he lived out of town and they talk about, you know, this guy who doesn't, he's, I think, passed um, and, or moved, or I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> um, and then, or I have people who are like surprised that I do what I do. They're like, you, you make them, not just, customize them. I don't just, you know, paint the tops. I had people ask me that. Do you paint the tops? No, no, I make them. I, I cut it out of leather. I do the whole thing. So it's a whole different kind of reintroduction in, into this world, in this area. It's, it is surprising to me sometimes that there aren't more boot makers um, because we do have such a big ranch community, but it's Wyoming. It's small. Um, <laughs> and and unless you have a way to expand outside of Wyoming and get yourself known outside, it may not be a successful thing to do. So. And, and you are right now in the process of making that like jump from working office jobs. Is that, and then doing <laughs> like cowboy boot uh, stuff full time. So what is that process like for you trying to get yourself known and make, basically making that, that big jump, that leap into doing custom cowboy boots? Um, you know, it's been fun because I'm making new connections in Cheyenne and just kind of getting my name out there. You know, I was born and raised here. Um, I had a dad who knows everybody, uh, still does. He knows everybody. And I'm trying to kind of do the same, you know, make sure that, that other people know I'm here uh, and just, it's, it's been a transition, you know, I, I do office work and it's not probably going away anytime soon because it's just a part-time office job right now. Um, and it's, it supports my dad's business. Um, so it's probably not going away, but it, it'll be an interesting transition if it ever does, when it becomes full-time, let's work at it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm also raising two, two young children, um, who are not school age yet. So, so so it could be a while before I'm like full blown full time uh, because of, of that factor, especially. Um, so it's, it's a fun transition because it's allowing me that, that excuse for creativity <laughs> um, that I didn't necessarily have before. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you're taking from your previous experience outside of the boot industry and you're bringing it into the boot industry and you're sort of seeing um, this, this journey in, in a new light because of your previous experiences? Um, you know, connecting to people is something that I think is extremely important when doing boot making. And I think it can be forgotten a little bit. Um, 
you know, I work in, in health insurance. So I have to ask the most personal questions that you don't ask people just on a standard basis. Um, and with boot making, because it, it can become a very intimate setting because you're asking someone to remove their shoes and lots of people are very self-conscious of that. And you're asking, you know, personal questions on, on your design, you know, what sorts of things are important in your life. It's definitely, I think would be a connection that, that the two of them both share. Interesting. So, um, I, cowboy boots are, you're right. Like it comes so personal, like people have their styles, their tastes, their, you know, what they like in inside how they're built. Like everybody has even taking care of them. Like everybody has their own yeah. way and <laughs> every true. other way of caring for cowboy boots is completely wrong. Like I've done videos on them <laughs> then on how yeah. you should condition and clean your boots. And people are like, that is completely wrong. You have no idea what you're talking about. So <laughs> I, I love, uh, when, when you talk about uh, personalization in boots and uh, the fact of making that connection, when you're trying to build a boot for somebody, though, what is that like when trying to make that connection and figuring out what they like and what is possible for them, not only, you know, when you're making it or within their budgets? So how do you, how do you help somebody figure out um, what they want uh, and be most happy with it? Um, you know, so you start out with the typical, like, where are you going to wear these? What are you going to do with them? You know, are these a working boot or are these your Sunday best? You know, are these boots you're going to keep polished every day or are they going to get caked in mud and dirt and just and horse, whatever, <laughs> you know, and you start at those like really generalized, like this is footwear. I mean, it's going to get dirty no matter what you do with it because it's on the ground. Mm -hmm. So you start that way. And that's how you talk about, you know, what kind of leathers you're going to use, you know, elephant versus bison versus Italian leathers versus kangaroo. Ver you know, there's a million choices out there. Um, but then I also will sit and design wise talk to them about, you know, what I am capable of doing, but also what then budget range that would put them in. You know, you, you can go obviously into pair of customs with a budget, but it's gotta be a fairly hefty one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can say, okay, I have to stop here. I can't go beyond that, but it's not going to be a small price, mm -hmm. you know? It, so, you know, I talk to people about that budget, like, okay, are you wanting, you know, just stitch work? Cause stitch work is less, less on that budget than inlay work. It's less on my, my time and my energy as well and materials. Um, so, you know, finding that balance for people and, and then just the little additions above that is, is all a part of the kind of introductory conversation with building a pair of boots. So. Love it. Um, with talking about the, the price of boots and the budget, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are scared of the initial price point of not only custom boots, but like off the shelf boots sometimes. Now, I, I, right? I saw, <laughs> I saw that it was either this week or last week that off-white and Air Jordan 4 had like this collaboration. They called it the sale sneaker and it sold for over $1,000, several, several pairs. Um, what do you think about the sneaker industry and does sneaker price reflect quality and how does that relate to the cowboy boot world? <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> no. throwing it all out there and let you do what you want with it. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, you know, the sneaker industry is a whole different ball game because, um, you know, custom is a lot. I see lots of customized, you know, the pre-made where they paint them. Um, and that's very common. And uh, custom, I don't see a lot of, I don't, I don't have enough connections in that side of the industry to say, Hey, I have, know what a custom pair of, of kicks costs, you know, uh, I think, you know, I, I struggle with paying a lot of money for a factory made 
shoe that may not have the best repertoire in paying their employees well. Um, you know, I, 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 I struggle with that a little bit, um, you know, trying to make sure that those are sustainable um, concepts and, and that they're treating them fairly. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to get this whole question. It's a, like I said, it's a big question. So comparably, you know, obviously factory costs much less, even if they are paying their employees well, because it's a, it's a production base. So one person does this and they pass it on. So it, the amount of boots that can come out and amount of shoes is exponentially more than what I can do by myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can make four pair of boots a month at the top end. Like that's it. <laughs> no wow. more than that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very common unless you have employees, but it's just me. So, <laughs> um, and that's working full time. So right now it's less than that because I don't work full time. Um, so with custom, you know, custom footwear, there's always going to be collectors of things. Um, <laughs> I like, I like Barry's response, <laughs> low quality materials. And that's very true is, is they are, they do use a lower quality material. Sometimes I, if you found somebody who makes custom sneakers in, you know, in a free country, they're probably using better materials. Um, you know, I've made a pair of sneakers before, um, just because I can, <laughs> I wear them all the time and I love them, but they're repairable. One of, you know, they're not a throwaway. I wore out the soles. I put on a new pair of soles because that's, I, I, I don't want to make shoes that just fall apart. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> um, and many, many of the big sneaker companies that's what they do that's how they keep their business sustainable is they build their sneakers to fall apart within a certain amount of time so then somebody has to go buy another pair the next year so and that's initially um, what that yeah that's that's <laughs> initially what um got me into cowboy boots is because the sneakers would just break all the time, like yep. within six months or a year. And it's like, I'm just done with this. I want something to be repairable. Um, and, and coming from the, the custom boot world, I mean, you make these boots so well that they can be repaired throughout their entire life. Um, oh, absolutely. And actually end up costing maybe less in the long run, especially, yep. it, and it fits you so well, like, uh, it, it just makes sense sometimes to go with a custom cowboy boot or uh, uh, just a better cowboy boot altogether because you can get them resold and the life is just so much longer. Yeah. So, you know, a pair of cowboy boots custom made, depending on obviously how often you wear them and how you're wearing them and how you care for them, because those are important factors in la making your boots last as long as possible. Um, you know, making sure the leather doesn't dry out here in Wyoming. That's a huge issue um, because we're dry, like dry. <laughs> so you have to make sure they're conditioned and you cannot let them they start to crack and fall apart. And, and even that is repairable on a pair of custom boots. You can have them ripped apart and relasted and put a new vamp on. The term revamping actually came from the custom cowboy boot world. Like if you, like it, it dawned on me t one time, I was like, oh, oh, that makes sense. Because you're literally, that's the piece. You're revamping it. And it kind of grew into renewing different in, in different industries. Um, oh, that is awesome. I love the history of it. I never realized. You don't always think about it. <laughs> so no, that's that's when you relast the boot is the revamp or like, so what is that specifically? Is, so I'll, I'll show you, you know, nice little model here. The vamp is the front piece, right? Yep. Lots of times holes show up in this area because this is where the foot bends. Once there get to be too many holes and patches are ugly, you can take this cut it open up the side, cut off the vamp, and put a new one on. So you're and literally still have the boot fit you. And still have the boot fit you. Put it back on a last. You know, if you have it custom done, they probably already have your measurements, um, you know, and did your boot in the first place. <laughs> and so, so that's, yeah, a fantastic part is this entire boot is repairable. I've restitched slide seams. Um, these are not repairable. I don't like the holes as well, but 
they're popular in Wyoming right now. So um, they're not as repairable. They rip out because you pull. So I always reinforce through here, but they're not as easy, you know, to redo the top because there's a lot of work in this bit, but everything from here down is repairable. This doesn't have a heel on it yet. Um, my, my pro my project for this next week <laughs> is getting those sold. Um, but yeah, I love it. So. Thank you for explaining. That's great. I, I never knew that. <laughs> that is. I, I, this is why I love talking to bootmakers. Thank you for that. So you like the pull tabs better than the pull holes. I do prefer the pull tabs. I do. Um, the holes are tough because they're like a perfect circle, and cutting a perfect circle by hand is really hard to do. Um, and the pull tabs, eventually they rip out, but they're easier to repair. I can put a new one in and you don't notice it. You know, I can take out the stitching and stitch right back on where it was. I can put new, brand new pulls on and you won't, you'll look at them and never would know that they were ever torn out. Whereas holes, the holes like that, they, you, you then have a patch. That's, that's about, unless you're trying to replace the whole front, you have a patch right here. And you can sometimes, if they don't already have the collar on them, you can sometimes add a full collar and hide that patch job, but it's, it's still not quite as, as pretty. Mm -hmm. Wow. Lots of good info information here. <laughs> this is great content. Um, got a couple of questions about making boots versus shoes. So Carol asks, do you prefer making boots or shoes? Like which one um, yeah. is the best? That's such a hard question because um, they're both enjoyable in their own, like, unique ways. Shoes are faster um, and more versatile in, like, what you wear them with, you know. It's, it's easy to slip on a pair of shoes. Um, <laughs> and But sometimes, you know, I, I uh, made a pair of bright pink snake print high heel platforms for... Um, a friend's girlfriend, if you, if you check out my Instagram, it's the pictures are on there. And those were like just fantastically fun because they were different. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's not a lot of rules when it comes to colors and, and concepts with that. But sh boots are still have that artistic freedom on the tops that I still can't get anywhere else. So I love that part. That's my favorite. Awesome. <laughs> that, that pair of shoes if I remember correctly on your Instagram, that was a, a print, right? Yeah. What is it, it like working a with a print? Is it any different than working with any other leather? Is there something um, that's, that makes it different? You have to be careful because it can come off because it's a, there's a base leather and it's like paint or ink or I'm not really sure exactly what's on top of them. Um, so you do have to be careful. You can't glue on top of it because it will pull that print off with it. Um, but... Not, I mean, otherwise it's just leather. So does, does that make it a lower quality leather to, to no, work actually, with for that it reason? Was, it was a beautiful leather that I worked with. Um, it's lightweight, which is nice for shoes. You know, shoes can get super heavy um, if the, the leathers are too heavy. Um, but it was definitely not lesser quality. It was just, it's uh, the company that does them is called Frog Jelly. They're down in Texas and they do all sorts of cool custom prints on high quality leather. So very interesting. Yeah. I'm I'm always interested by by prints. Um sometimes uh I feel like it's it's a I I personally I'm not a fan of anything on a boot that pretends to be <laughs> something it's not, but I can see the draw of it and yes. the fact that you can do so many fun things with them. Yeah, and they they're um, they have some designs, and they also have you can do custom. So if you have a design you want to put on some leather to use for something else, a bag or shoes or or whatever, um, they can do that as well. Uh, so it's not like that one was very much you know the snake prints on the alligator embossed leather, like cow leather. It was a very like extreme steps of pretend. Um, but they also have things like stripes and cactus and, and Christmas designs and like all sorts of, of crazy fun. It's a really fun to just sit and scroll through and be like, Ooh, I could do that with this. I could do this. I could, it's fun. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. You can do. So. <laughs> I like the idea of a, of a, 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 a leather that's 
printed with Christmas themes and then using that as the vamp for the for a boot. It would be so ridiculous. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I love it. So what percentage of shoes to boots do you sell? This is a question from Barry Rosenstein. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's hard as Ali L's I'm still so fresh to have like a, a percentage of boots to shoes is is a really hard number to just be like it's 30%. It, I don't, I'm, I'm, <laughs> um, I don't have enough coming in to say that one way or the other. Well, um, what's, in general, know, like, are you selling more boots or selling more shoes? Um, you know, boots are really the, the draw. Um, but I'm also doing some, some stuff with another small company where I'm making a line of shoes for her shop. Oh, so no way. It, That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it could potentially, you know, be I could make a dozen or 20 pair of shoes for for her store so <laughs> it's a hard answer it's a hard answer so with that you're making the same style of shoe um but mm -hmm. just di different sizes what's what's that like when working custom is it easier is it, is it harder because you have to make sure they're all the same like what's that like um, it's, it's been an interesting learning process for the both of us. She makes handbags. Um, <laughs> and I contacted her and I was like, Hey, would you be interested in doing a collaboration project? And she was like, yeah, let's, let's look into this. And we've, you know, I taught her, um, <laughs> I've taught her employees how to pattern and they'll be doing, they'll be doing all of the top work. Um, they actually laser cut all of their leather, which is really kind of fascinating so he'll be able to make sure they're all like he can grade the patterns to make sure that the sizing is right and I don't have to touch a knife for that end of things um and so there's there's little things like that like learning how to grade them because I don't grade so reset like resizing them um I don't do that with custom boots mm -hmm. uh, you know each pattern is made to your measurements. So there's not just a, it's here's a standard size nine, you know, you start there and then it's made to measure not to standard sizing. Uh, so I did make her do the research on what sizes are most popular because I had nowhere, no idea where to start because that's not what I'm trained to do. Um, so she, you know, discovered the, you know, she had a, another friend who owns a boutique somewhere who sells shoes in her boutique. And she discovered, you know, this size, it's like size seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half are the most popular women's sizes of shoes. So, so it's, you know, it's been a good collaboration. I think we've both learned a lot. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's harder in the sense of, it's just new things to learn. Mm hmm where I already know how to make boots to your size mm -hmm. and I don't have to think about it as hard. <laughs> oh, so you, so this, so this new collaboration, you have mm -hmm. to think about it more than what you have to think about making boots just because it is so new. Thank you. Cause okay. it's new. Yeah. See, in my mind, I would think that it would be the other way around because you're just <laughs> making the shoe for somebody in the same process all the time. But because it's and, so new, and you I have think to it learn. Get it. There. Okay. You know, this is such a this is a fairly new collaboration. We're looking at like a spring launch. Mm -hmm. So um, I think you know the process. Once we get all of the beginning stuff, all of the patterns, the right size, all of the designs, the way she wants them all of that thing, all of those things, once we get that, then I think the rest of the process will be, will be a piece of cake, honestly. Like um, we're doing cement construction, so there's not stitching on the soles. There's not, you know, there's stitching on the upper and that's it. Everything else is glued together. Mm -hmm. So, Will they be repairable too because of that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, repairable really is to do with, the the sole construction so injected molded soles like on um tennis shoes is the most common place we see them are not repairable because you can't take them off the way that they are put onto the shoe is they put the shoe in a big machine with a, a form for how the sole is shaped 
and they inject the rubber into it. So it, that's how it's attached is by the heat and the, the cement that's in the rubber. So it's not removable. Whereas if it's removable, it can be repaired. Okay. Interesting. So, so just because it's cement construction doesn't mean it can't be repaired. Right. right. Okay. And what is, where can people find out more when you do launch that spring collection um, with the, your collaborator? Alexis Drake. Alexis Drake. <laughs> that's the brand. Yep. Yep. That's the brand. Her, she's Alexis Drake. And that'll be hopefully coming up. And, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> awesome. That's exciting. Uh, but if somebody was interested in getting some custom cowboy boots from you, how would they go about that process? Um, so, you know, because it's so custom, you have to contact me directly, you know, whether it's through Facebook or Instagram or my email, um, my website that is in process of being uh, prettied <laughs> and, and made perfectly functional. I, I'm, I mean, working on that right now. Um, so I, I need measurements. I need those things. I can't make, I don't like when people are, oh, well, I'm a size nine. That's good. That doesn't tell me anything because shoes, depending on the brand, change sizes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I need the foot tracing and the measurements. And, and I like to work one-on-one. -on -one. I really like to work in person if I can. Um, I've done lots of them not in person, not cowboy boots. I've done lots of military reenactment boots in, you know, they send me the measurements from a video. Um, but that would be, yeah, you have to, is direct contact. Mm -hmm. so. And what is your starting price? Jeff, Jeff is Jack, just uh, came in and asked that question. Thanks for the question, <laughs> Jeff. So, um, I start at 1920 for a pair of boots with three rows of stitching on the top, standard leathers, you know, nothing exotic, um, and 12 inches tall. Mm -hmm. um, so that fairly standard, standard cowboy boot that when people think cowboy boot, um, and then anything extra on top of that adds to the price from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, on, on average, I'm somewhere in the middle of, of the range on custom cowboy boot prices. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a great deal, especially when we're talking about the off-white air Jordan four sale sneakers going for over a thousand dollars. And they're, if you yeah, wore yeah. them regularly, they probably will only last like uh, a year or so when you could <laughs> pretty much for the same price, get a pair of customs that's made for you exactly the way that you want that will last you the rest of your life. And you possibly could hand down to your children. Seems I like a much better deal. Much, yeah, I can pretty much tell you the people that spend a thousand dollars on those shoes are not wearing them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're going to be displayed on their wall with all of the rest of their collection. Um, <laughs> Cowboy boot collectors wear their boots. It's kind of fantastic. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm on a group called Cowboy Boot Collectors on Facebook, and they all wear their boots. Like, they love them. They're not for just display. Um, so, you know, with, with the price of custom, people balk at that sometimes. They're, they're like, you, you want how much? And it's, well, yes, but because of the repair, because they will last, you know, a lot longer to begin with, before you even need a repair, it makes it worth it in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of that pay for quality up front and it'll last you a lifetime if you pay for low quality up front. You have to buy more. There's a constant turn with lower quality. And spend more in the long run. And you do spend more in the long run, yep. True. Awesome, awesome. Thank, thank you so much. much. Alyssa, for taking the time with me today on this Ask the Bootmaker. Yeah. This was so much fun, such great content. I love the, <laughs> the history behind the revamp saying, like that is new to me, new to everybody else too, I hope, because that was great. Um, what is your, uh, where, what's the best way to contact you? Through the, through the website, through Facebook, through in, here on Instagram, what's the uh, best? Probably Facebook um, is, is still the best way to contact me. Um, you know, I'm generationally there. <laughs> um, you know, Facebook and my website has my phone number. You know, a direct phone call is always good. I like, like I said, I like the more face to face anyway, but just initial is, is Facebook is a great way to contact me. Perfect. Thank, thank you so, so much again. again. And everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, follow 
Allie L's Custom Boot and Shoes on Facebook as well as here on Instagram as well. All righty. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.